Hi friends, so I go for February month 2022 Yojana, title New Education Policy. So we go for the title New Education Policy 2020 Vision and Pathways. So before going to this uh, title, we need to understand why we need to focus on education policy and why the term new is added here. And we know that the basic information on Indian education was designed by Britishers and the Macaulay system. After independence, we have our own education policy. Still, we have the link of that British systems, British ideas of education, which has a huge influence in the Indian system. And right now, we can also know that as economy of the world is transforming, even we have a term called knowledge economy, which needs new type of education system. So all this requires India to create this new education policy 2020 and we will find some of the important points of this article to understand what the new stands here. Okay. So that first one is, I will put paragraph 1, so paragraph 2, 3, 4 and 5. So in paragraph 1, so a new education policy aligned with India's aspiration goals of 21st century proclaims to transform into a global knowledge superpower. So it clearly say, it says that new education policy is to focus on India as a global power. So India as a global power means, please understand, or global superpower. So uh, global power, first thing is in the aspect of knowledge. So that comes the role of technology. So we want to become a technology superpower, human resources superpower. So all these are the aspirations. So that's the point here, which we need to interpret and aspirational goals of 21st century. So aspirational goals. So India has its own goals for 21st century. So 21st century, all we can relate here. So like technological power, technological superpower, human resource superpower. So all this can be related to this. And to cater all these things, we have this new education policy 2020. So and in paragraph 2, they have given a deadline for this new education policy that is 2040. So deadline is 2040. 2040 so to fulfill the goals targets and pathways so the child who gets entered into education system and a new policy would exist having gone through a new policy process ultimately we can take this time frame so we have a policy by 2020 and we are expecting the results by 2040 so what we need to understand is any education policies impact takes a generation at least 20 years to see the real impact of education that is the reason why the deadline is given another 20 years down the line to know what is the impact on Indian society, especially on the children's. Okay, that is given in par paragraph 2 and 3. And when you go for paragraph 4, so what are the aim? Aim of this new education policy is first and foremost thing is universalization of, so universalizing school education. So education again can be split into school education and higher education. They want to universalize the school education, that is gross enrollment ratio. So, gross enrollment ratio should be 100 percentage. So, what is gross enrollment ratio means? And also they have given that is by 2030, by 2030 and for higher education, so gross enrollment ratio should be 50 percentage by 2035. So, first we need to understand what is gross enrollment ratio means. So, what is gross enrollment ratio is the target says 100 percentage by 2030 for school education, higher education 50 percentage by 2035. What we need to understand here is gross enrollment ratio relates to in that particular age bracket, how many kids are in the school. So, when you take this school education bracket, so for example, it can be from 3 to 17 years, what the target says is by 2030 all Indian kids should be in the school that's called 100 percentage whereas for higher education the target is around 50 percentage 2035 it should be 50 percentage and all developed economies that's the gross enrollment ratio at the uh, higher education level so there are a lot of reasons why people lose out the opportunity of higher education even well educated society these are the numbers and there are possibility for people to move out from school education to vocational education all this can be done so this is the target or aim of this new education policy that's given in paragraph 4 and paragraph 5 so this universalize that is called universalization of school education where school education or education is reachable to everyone 
so it expect that the universalization of school education will provide scope uh, for maximizing we go for the next uh, page maximizing enrollment in higher education besides providing universal access enrollment undertake measurements to bring back drop out children to schools and to prevent them from occurring further so in universalization also what the primary focus is they want to ensure that drop out kids are coming back to the schools so this is what the new education policy tries to achieve so under universalization of education so that is given in paragraph 1 in the next page then paragraph 2 so paragraph 3 and 4 so what paragraph 2 says is so regarding modification of so modifying pedagogical structure how school systems are created so right now the existing pedagogical structure is 10 plus 2 So right now we can see that we need to write a tenth examination, a public examination, and twelfth examination. That's the current structure. The proposed one is so under New Education Policy 2020. So proposed one is five plus three plus three plus four. So the reason what given by the New Education Policy why we are splitting up five plus three plus three plus four is because in tenth plus two uh, pedagogic structure where students are more concentrated on tenth. public examination and 12 public ex examinations previous years of education was not taken into consideration by the students as the important in your life but the research in education system found out that especially that the lower level of education system when the students are very attentive and concentrating on their education there's a greater potential that there's impact on positive impact on their life and society So government was keen to change the structure from ten plus two to five plus three plus three plus four. We'll see what this five three three plus three plus four is. Okay. In this, the most important thing is government is focusing on this early, early childhood care and education. So this is the most important thing where government is giving greater concentration. That is from the age of three. So from the age of three, so they are going to focus on this. early childhood care and education so what under new education policy government feel is this particular one that is early childhood care and education forms the basis or foundation to make kids ready for the school so that is given greater importance in this new education policy that going to transform the life of the kid and also the entire society and and so they say from 3 to 8 years so 3 to 8 years after 3 to 8 years that is called foundation stage so foundation stage that is the reason why they are focusing on this foundation stage for critical development so child's major critical development happens at this age so government under new education policy is focusing on that dimensions and here we can see that another one what we called as foundational literacy and numeracy by grade 3 so go government want to achieve that that is a foundation of literacy and numeracy by grade 3 if any student in india reaching the level of grade 3 that is third standard under new education policy that should they should have a foundation for literacy literacy is nothing but ability to read and also good in numbers and what a research found out says is research finding says is until the grade of 3 if a person or a kid is able to effectively deal with numbers effectively deal with language after that their education becomes very simple because they are designed for education system they are very good in reading books they are very good in numbers so they are more more interested to the studies until the grade 3 if a per, if a kid is losing this opportunity of not in good in numbers not relating to uh, reading books after that the dropout rates are very high so based on that only government gives a greater importance for grade 3 under grade 3 a kid need to have a proficiency of reading and also good in numbers that is called foundation literacy and numeracy and next thing is paragraph 4 so they also focusing on higher education so under new education policy this is what we saw under school education higher education they want to make multidisciplinary so what is multidisciplinary means A, school, a kid in higher education especially at graduation level they need to have opportunities to study various subjects so this helps in opening the horizons of the children in various dimensions which can, helps in their personal life and also building the community especially regarding cognitive skills when the person is multidisciplinary multidisciplinary means knowledge of various subjects 
helps them to solve the problems very effectively. Uh, to give a good example, as right now in India, we can see that uh, most of the people are from engineering background. Any problem they always see from engineering perspective. So, that is a problem solving based on social perspective, psychological perspective. So, that can be done. So, there comes the importance of multidisciplinary approach. So, it is not that you want to solve the problem only based on your knowledge, domain knowledge in single dimensions. When you are multidisciplinary, you can able to understand the problems in various dimensions and your solution will be more broad based. So, that is the reason why higher education should be based on multidisciplinary. So, that is given in pay, uh, paragraph 4. Next, next page, so paragraph 1, paragraph 2, paragraph 3, so paragraph 4 and 5. So, in this paragraph 1, the policy says that, so multidisciplinary higher education institutions, so multidisciplinary higher education institutions, higher education institutions need to be developed in India. The next thing is, that is called as multidisciplinary educational research universities, so multidisciplinary educational research universities. So, our objective of higher education in multidisciplinary as we discussed that it helps in cognitive skills, ability to make good decisions because you want taking into consideration of various factors that makes the decision very objective. So, that is the reason they have uh, got under new education policy they want to create this multidisciplinary uh, educational research universities that is given paragraph 1. So, that is in paragraph 2. So, another most important thing about new education policy is so, new education policy, they are also focusing on bridging the gap. So, bridging the gap in communities. So, we know that in literacy levels based on communities, we have huge differences. Literacy rate in SC, ST, women, you can see that it is very low in India when compared with national averages. That is called the community gaps. So, new education policy have provisions for bridging that gap and so they have given the social economically disadvantaged groups, socially, social economic disadvantaged groups and government need to identify this socially educa educationally disadvantaged groups and we can see within the states there are larger populations where they have coming under this category and as per this policy they want to create special education zones, special education zones. To address the problem of this community gap in education, as per this policy, they are creating this special education zone. So, this is another most important initiative where the mo schemes related to education will be effectively implemented in the special education zones within the state level. Next thing is, is paragraph 3. The next thing is, especially in the aspect of governance. So, how education should be governed? So, governance in education. So, this policy gives a lot of inputs. First and foremost thing is setting up school complexes and clusters. So, they want to identify in a locality what are the various schools are there. They were combined into clusters. So, so there will be a resource sharing will be there. So, that is there. Next thing is set, setting up of school standards and authority. So, they want to create a standard in school education and for that they, there should be a separate authority for implementing it. Whereas, school standards is for teachers, for infrastructures all comes under this reforming education uh, examination boards. So, right now all this are being done under this effective governance and also they are going to create some institutional mechanisms like higher education commission of India. So, higher education commission of India. So, one umbrella infrastructure uh, institution for higher education focusing on other verticals. So, they have different sp split ups. One is National Higher Education Resource Center, National Higher Education Resource Center, which is part of this Higher Education Commission of India. The next thing is National Assessment and Accreditation Council and Higher Education Grant Council. These are related to higher education, all part of this Higher Education Commission of India. Ultimately, under new education policy for higher education, they are providing infra uh, institutional mechanisms. So, one is regarding this uh, uh, education resource center. So, they will de uh, determine what should be the future education high, higher, higher future higher education. And next thing is assessment, how this educations, examinations, all these assessments are being done. And finally, we have this uh, uh, higher education grants council. So, how this uh, financial resources are being allocated. That is all given in paragraph 3 and 4. And next when you go for paragraph 5. 
and also focusing on uh, state school standard authority which is being established especially for higher education so for based on this higher education comes commission of india at state level they are going to establish state school standards authority state school standards authority especially for quality dimensions so these are the things being done so this for school level at state and there is also higher education commission of india at state level so these are two separate institutions and this is given in pa paragraph 5 and next we go for so another point is paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 paragraph 3 4 5 6 so in paragraph 1 we need to go for the previous page the fact is given that is by 2025 by 2025 around 50 percentage 50 percentage students will be exposed to vocational education will be exposed to vocational education so vocational education is most important in an economy because it's not possible for every students to get into the streams right now which is considered to be very uh, popular like uh, professional streams it's not possible for every kids because their learning pattern and understanding of subject is very different so for them there is an opportunity under vocational education where they can learn a trade so learning a trade is nothing but learning a new skill like uh, plumbing electrician carpentry so this all comes under vocational education as per this new education policy by 2025 50% age of students both in school and higher education level they have an exposure to this vocational education so they can make the career choices based on this okay that is given in paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 so national research foundation national research foundation is being created under this policy and especially focusing on research and innovations focusing on research and innovations in college level universities and college research and innovation and universities and college in multidisciplinary research or interdisciplinary research so so under this national research foundation money will be allocated especially college and university level for interdisciplinary approach this interdisciplinary research where research will be done in multiple dimensions so that is being encouraged that is given in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 and technology is being effectively used in this education system so how where technology is being used is one is for teaching so teaching is one evaluation is one so teaching evaluation and uh, professional development so professional development so these are the various areas where technology is being effectively used based on this policy and uh, especially reaching disadvantaged people through technology so this policy clearly uses technological leverage so right now we can see that technology can have a positive impact on the people as most of our indians have mobile phones and and they are active in our uh, internet space so that can be leveraged by the government so for all this purpose teaching evaluation professional development of the staffs so that is given in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 a promise is made under this policy saying that 6% of gdp will be spent for education this is a global standard so when an economy spends 6% of gdp in education education is a social infrastructure and that clearly have an advantage in future socio economic development of the society so that is what the uh, promise under this new education policy the next thing is so in paragraph 5 they are also focusing on internal internationalization of education so under this new education policy so government was very keen that indian students should have the scope of understanding outside world so how this is being done is one is where indian colleges and universities are given opportunities to open their campuses outside of india that is one thing being proposed and that is high performing indian universities so like iits iims can open their uh, colleges outside of india and apart from this global universities can also open the campuses in india so that is a greater possibility of indian students interacting with global students so that is another most important thing under this uh, uh, new education policy and next one is uh, so new education policy also focuses on indian language art and culture so art and culture in education so based on new education policy the local resources of indian society it is our language art and cultures are integrated into our education system and ultimately for that so they are going to create indian institute of translation and interpretation 
so indian institute of translation interpretation to promote our indian language and this will be also as a qualifying pattern so qualifying parameters so st studying studying indian language becomes a qualifying parameter so qualifying parameter for employment opportunities so government is going to in incentivize students to learn our indian languages very effectively and they are creating institution for this that is indian institute of translation and interpretation which is being incentivized by becoming mandatory for employment opportunities so these are the aspects of new education policy why it is called new because of all these points next we go for the article bridging education and communities so bridging education and communities so so paragraph 1 So paragraph two, paragraph three, and paragraph four. And we already saw in the previous article where there is always a community gap in education. So in this article, they are going to focus how to bridge the gap in education among communities. Okay. And in this new education policy, so what they found out is previous education policies provide compulsory education for childrens. So paragraph one. so previous education policies focused on compulsory education for all social groups so compulsory education for all social groups and they established established so regulatory structures so regulatory structures and also outcomes equity so all these factors are given in given in previous education policies they are giving the background for this particular news article and uh, so with the growth of education system there becomes more challenges and in the previous education policies more about knowledge so more about knowledge not about application so one of the biggest criticism about the previous education policies is the education policies are designed in such a way that students should gain more knowledge about various subjects rather than the applicability of that knowledge so that is set right through this new education policy so in this we can see that community development so or, or community involvement so this is all related to previous uh, education policies that is community's involvement is through school development and monitoring committee so in the previous education policies community's involvement is through a uh, school development and monitoring committees and through nss ncc and red cross so these are the opportunities where community can interact with the schooling systems in the previous education policies so right now we can see that by 2020 education policy that is given in so paragraph 2 again so new education policy 2020 so 2020 so they make flexibility and autonomy flexibility and autonomy so autonomy for community engagement for community engagement we'll see what is this flexibility and autonomy in community engagement so ultimately that results in bridging the gap of education in the society so new education policy mainly focuses on how to integrate the local community in education system take example schools or colleges level how local community can play in a very active role ultimately that result in bridging the gap of education among community so the in new education policy that is being driven especially based on two ideas one is flexibility and autonomy flexibility and autonomy is given to the local communities so they can play an active role in education systems okay so next thing is in paragraph 3 so there should be a more explicit explicitly and implicitly explicitly and implicitly role of community in education so community education which is being encouraged by this new education policy 2020 education policy 2020 okay and this makes education more holistic multidisciplinary and also experimental learning and integrating local skills so all these are greatest benefits so why when communities involved in it one is local skills are being integrated so local skills and experimental learning experiential learning experiential learning so they will learn from the community and next thing is autonomy so these are the benefits of integrating local community into education system so that is what given so one is you can integrate local skill in our education curriculum and next thing is 
experiential learning they interact with society and know in society what is happening and as we saw that one of the important objective of new education policy is transform the knowledge into actions so that all can be achieved through this and here under community involvement in education we can see the role of private place so private and community participation so private and community participation where the policy encourages greater role of private players and community participation so we are integral part of school education so school education so if you are in south india you can see that already is being done so private players will be actively involved in education and also community participation is very high this we compare with north india where government is the sole provider of education in north india so especially states like bihar jharkhand and all so these points can aptly said there so just you can understand this don't relate with your local community you get confused on it so still in that there are a lot of changes being proposed next thing is paragraph 1 paragraph 2 paragraph 3 paragraph 4 and 6 and 7 so in this paragraph 1 so so early early child care and education which you already saw in the previous uh, topic where government is very keen on the age group of 3 to 8 where they want to strengthen the foundation literacy of our kids okay where here you can see that anganwadis are going to play a major role so anganwadis are began to play a major role and especially parents parents going to play a major role in the in this aspect of this early child care and education and so they have this school cluster model where local community is also integrated in the school school cluster model they take a particular region identify what are the schools there and they try to integrate into one school clusters where resources can be shared even the community resources are taken into consideration so all these are part of it and we know that traditionally anganwadis are focusing on nutrition so they are mainly majorly focusing on nutrition among uh, children so that can be effectively used in this early child uh, child care and education so anganwadi is going to play a major role in this uh, age group of 3 to 8 years education in indian system okay and so nutrition and also health care here we can see the role of community in education system so right now under new education policy especially for the age group of 3 to 8 anganwadis are being integrated to provide the required nutritional status and also child care and education where parents is also included in it so that is the uh, aspect and next thing is this cluster schools cluster schools what we discussed right now is nothing but uh, school complexes are being created in a particular geographical regions and they try to put as one cluster okay and next thing is what the advantage of this cluster model is uh, so cluster cluster model of schools so cluster model of schools result in active community participation so community participation next thing is encouraging innovations so encouraging innovation schooling systems and next thing is so which also includes local experts so local experts in schooling so all these are the advantages of this cluster model which is given in paragraph 2 and also local experts which also includes ngos so that comes the role of community in education especially at school level and anganwadi playing a role in the age group of 3 to 18 so 3 to 8 3 to 8 okay and also new education policy in paragraph 3 so new education policy so new education policy encourages the role of community community and alumni so alumni and volunteers so volunteers in foundational literacy and numeracy so this we can see that again related to 3 to 8 years where community alumni and volunteers can play a major role so alumni are people who already studied in the schools so they can play a role in that particular school because they have the bondage with the school and uh, i think there's one case study in india where andhra pradesh where alumni especially people outside of india who are nris are funding the schools there where a government program is based on it so that clearly shows that how alumni can play a very active role in the development of education systems especially at the school level the next thing is in paragraph 4 so an initiative called samajik chetna kendra this proposed under this new education policy to promote social co cohesion during non teaching and schooling hours 
it's nothing but to build the community bondage or to build the community strength so this being created at the school level samajik chetna kendra where people will forget their differences combine together under the schooling premises so that builds the social uh, cohesion community cohesion or oneness so next thing is paragraph 5 and uh, so in paragraph 5 and 6 which is related to higher education the most important point is the choice based choice based credit system choice based credit system so where a student can learn various subjects and they have the credit for each subjects so ultimately that results in experiential learning so what this idea says is right now as student especially in higher education if they want to have a knowledge in varied subject this choice based credit system gives them the opportunity to study in various subjects for example a person may be interested in maths a person may be interested in uh, literature they can study all the subjects and they have the credit system for each of this and ultimately they have an experimental learning so they experiential learning they learn various subjects becomes multidisciplinary which is always advisable in a society because cognitive skills built up when you study various subjects okay so that is given paragraph 5 and 6 next thing is paragraph 7 uh, which focuses on value based education so value based education or what we called as ethical education so ultimately what is the advantage of this value based education again promoted by new education policy is under value based education people are able to understand the society societal values and political values ultimately this makes them as a very good citizen based on value based education lot of problems in a society can be easily solved any social issues it can be easily solved based on value based education and more focused on universal values universal human values ethical values constitution values so all these are basis of this value based education to give a good example if a kid has proper value based education the kid can clearly understand that corruption is unethical harming a fellow human being is unethical or going against a woman is unethical crime against women is unethical so value based education has a huge impact on society especially its social problems then we go for paragraph 1 paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 so they are also promoting this uh, service based participation in societal needs that is given in paragraph 1 it's nothing but making a student more community oriented so so where we can say seva service as the objective of the students so community oriented so makes them community oriented and in paragraph 2 so they, so they also focus on global citizenship education so global citizenship education and here understand please understand bridging the gap between education and community is not only within india so this new education policy want to make future india to behave like a global citizens so they want to integrate with global order global countries where we need to have broader perspective of understanding the society from global point of view that is the reason global citizenship education where this new education policy focuses on and especially it's more focused on tolerance peace inclusive societies so that is the objective of this global citizenship education apart from there are other initiatives are taken especially for rural communities so rural communities so one is nat bharat abhiyan so this is mainly focusing on delivering the education to the needs of rural india so this was created to develop curriculums and the needs of uh, rural india and also they have created this mahatma gandhi national Com- council of rural education so mahatma gandhi national council of rural education so to address the uh, needs of this and also they are focusing on under, under this they are also focusing on mocc that is massive online open course so we can see lot of uh, private plays are there in modern day era especially for rural community so government is very keen on creating this massive online open courses and as a portal for swayam portal so swayam platform an objective of this thing is fostering social responsibility and community engagement social responsibility and community engagement so all this are being created by 
government under this policy to promote education integrating with community okay okay thank you